With Black Panther being released in theaters, the speculation on his eventual sequel is mounting. But before we speculate on any plot or direction, we first have to select an antagonist for T'Challa. Out of the many possibilities, I personally have on my list Craven the Hunter, Hunter, and Namor. And no, I'm not saying Craven the Hunter, Hunter. Hunter is a different person than Craven the Hunter. Now, in an early draft of Black Panther, Craven the Hunter was actually included, according to director Ryan Coogler. Craven the Hunter has actually fought Black Panther multiple times in comics, but the interaction Ryan Coogler was taking inspiration from was Black Panther number 6 to 7, which was a part of Christopher Priest's run. While usually a Spider Man villain, Craven actually has spent a lot of time in Kenya during his early years, which can help explain why he's in Africa, or just they can change the nation I'm sure that Craven's in, just to basically say, oh, he's nearby, and maybe he hunts around that area, which is why Wakanda has special interest to him. You could easily just mess a few things around and a few twists and turns there, and bam, easy explanation. But besides that, Craven actually did take a serum very similar to the heart-shaped herb that enhanced his physical abilities and senses, which could make him a physical match for T'Challa. Now, I'm not saying that it literally has a connection, I'm just saying that the effects of the serum he took are similar to it. So if they want to retcon it in any way, shape, or form, they could easily do that. Now, while I'm sure Craven isn't interested in stealing vibranium, he may be more intrigued in learning the ways of Wakanda in the Black Panther. I mean, there is a part in the comics where he's very much, he's a very reverent character. So there's a part in the comics where he kind of views it as an honor to learn the ways of the Black Panther. And he actually asked T'Challa to basically take him on as a student. But also in the previously mentioned Black Panther number six to seven, Craven is actually hired to capture T'Challa for Hunter, who I'll mention in a bit, AKA the White Wolf. Now, Craven wins their initial fight, but T'Challa actually almost kills Craven in their second encounter, having to be stopped by Iron Man. So, I definitely think this could serve as a good way to introduce Craven to viewers without having to rush his introduction and development in a potentially future Spider Man film. I mean, if you can introduce him in the Black Panther 2 or Black Panther 3, then you can definitely you know, have a storyline where at the end of it, he turns his focus to Spider Man once he is defeated. And it's actually possible that after Kraven is defeated, he kind of goes down a dark path and the Spider-Man movie that he appears in could be of some form, some adaptation of Kraven's last hunt. It's possible. I don't really know if that would work out well though because you kind of missed the whole history between the two, but I'm just saying it's a possibility. As previously mentioned in Christopher Priest's run, Hunter appears, aka White Wolf, and he could prove to be a good antagonist for a sequel film. Now in the comics, Hunter is actually an older adoptive brother to T'Challa, who is appointed the leader of the Wakandan secret police by T'Chaka. They basically commit various off the books, you know, actions that may be considered unethical to a lot of people in the name of protecting Wakanda, which they do until T'Challa as king disbands them. You know, kind of citing that one, they're unethical and a little, they go a little too extreme in certain areas. But I, I kind of view this as, you know, just like in Thor Ragnarok, Hela was kind of used to reveal the truth behind Asgard's past, you know, the very dirty, really not clean, very off the books kind of past. And Hunter could use this kind of, he could be used in the same way. He can function in the same way for Black Panther 2. And as the first movie introduced Wakanda to many viewers, the second movie can explore Wakanda. And there's no better way I feel like to explore a certain concept or an area, anything like that, there's no better way than really going into some of its dark deeds, you know, its sins, more or less. The only real conflict I see, and spoiler alert for the Black Panther movie, if you haven't seen it, I'm just saying it now, spoiler alert, Hunter is known as the White Wolf, and Bucky in the credit scene for Black Panther is called the White Wolf. Now, that's not a true problem, I would say, because Hunter could just be called Hunter, or give, or he could be given a new alias, but I thought it would be fair to mention that in case Marvel's just not interested in ever introducing the character. Now, the last villain that I think could be good for a sequel is Namor. So, selecting Namor is actually really interesting to me because as a sequel antagonist, he can provide an interesting tension as in the 616 universes, both T'Challa and Namor are kings of their kingdoms. So they're both rulers of essentially advanced hidden nations, more or less. And Namor and T'Challa also have a deep rivalry and very complicated relationship, which I think really peaked right before the Secret event, a Secret Wars event in 2015, excuse me, because Namor, if you guys don't know, he basically attacked Wakanda and flooded it, 
during this whole Avengers vs. X-Men thing, and I'm not going into that right now, but I thought it was worth mentioning. But if Black Panther in a sequel decides to use Hunter, it could be revealed that maybe one of the off the books interactions and possibly conflicts was with Atlantis, and maybe as a side effect, there's some bad blood between Wakanda and Atlantis, or maybe they captured Namor. And the reason I mentioned why would they capture Namor, well, in the Ultimate Universe incarnation, Namor is actually a criminal that was in tune for multiple kind of centuries. Um, actually not centuries, I think it was thousands of years because he's basically immortal in the Ultimate Universe before his release by the Fantastic Four. So I think it'd be pretty interesting if Namor is actually an Atlantean criminal held captive by Wakanda, but I doubt they'll go that route, but it'd be cool if he escapes and that starts a new war between Atlantis and Wakanda. And this is also extra important too because I definitely think, and I think a lot of people have speculated, that the MCU wants to introduce Namor in the near future, definitely to compete with WB's Aquaman. So introducing Namor and Atlantis to the MCU would accomplish that, and also maybe lead its way to a Namor solo film if he's received warmly enough in a Black Panther sequel. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for checking out our content. Check out our Facebook and Twitter for our latest updates, and our website for the latest news articles and editorials. Also, feel free to donate to our Patreon if you'd like to see our current content get better. Thanks for watching, we hope you guys have a great day.